I had been a fan of American Vandal, which was a show on Netflix that was co-created by Dan Peralt. Um, I had a general meeting with him and just told him how much I loved the show. And at the end of it, I asked kind of my go-to question sometimes as a industrious producer, which is, what's your magic wand idea? Like if you had a magic wand and any crazy wild idea of yours could exist as a movie, what would it be? And he said an R-rated talking dog movie. And I remember I was like, okay, okay. So a little bit like sort of a Ted kind of thing or a sausage party. And he said, no, I have a whole story. And I said, what's the story? And he said, a lovable mutt who's abandoned by a jerk of an owner who teams up with three other dogs to track him down and bite his dick off. And I laughed. And my assistant, who was standing nearby, who heard the conversation, she started laughing. I'm like, all right, OK, we're down for that. Let's do that. And so we commissioned the script from Dan as an original story and then uh, developed it with him. The key thing, um, the, the, the thing that we wanted to avoid ever, ever, uh, was spoof. Uh, so spoof, parody, that was something that this movie was never going to be. We never wanted to be thought of as the movie that was making fun of talking dog movies, period. Um, yes, we are an R-rated talking dog movie, so of course we do have that subversion or reinvention of the genre, but we didn't want that to be our reason for existence. Yes, it's a subversion or a reinvention of a beloved genre, which is, you know, dogs doing cute things and dogs being on a mission to try to accomplish something. But it is so much more than just an R-rated take on that. I had been sent the script and uh, some other some other people in my world had read it too and it said, this is really so curious to see what you think. And, um, and so I had read it and I immediately loved the premise of, you know, kind of, uh, kind of emulating a homeward bound, sweet kind of Disney-esque dog movie with a journey behind it. And then of course it's filthy R-rated with the sweetest dogs. And, and I remember thinking, oh, this could be this could be really good. This could be really something I've, I've never seen before. And um, along with the counsel of my children, who, who when I pitched the idea, they immediately said, I said, what do you, what do you guys think about, it? you know, it's, it's like a talking dog movie. And it, it's seemingly super sweet, but it's basically R-rated and the whole goal of it is for me to find my owner and bite his dick off. They were like, you have to make that movie. So that was kind of the, <laughs> that was the tipping point right there. With the audaciousness of the premise, the other thing that surprised me was how sweet the relationships are. And, uh, how sweet and earnest Reggie is and uh, you know this bond that forms between the dogs and I was like oh this is going to be the the kind of surprise of the movie in a, in, a, in a real way. I don't know it's the Australian in me but I do I always laugh at really rude jokes so I, I just laughed the whole way through and I thought it was really audacious and uh, it felt like a return to kind of um, a comedy comedy uh, a lot of the kind of comedic scripts I read, they, they tend to like slip into another genre, whether it be romance or action. And this was just um, really just a, you know, balls out comedy comedy. Strays is the story of a dog who's in a toxic relationship with their owner and doesn't realize it. And uh, Meets is basically abandoned by him and connects with a group of stray dogs who convince him that it's time to get revenge. And so this dog goes after the, the appendage that his owner loves the most. And hint, it's not his foot. Uh, Maggie's an Australian Shepherd. She's very good friends with Hunter. She's also abandoned by her owner who has a new kind of uh, Instagram dog. And so she's sort of grappling with that rejection, but equally trying to come into her own. She wants to be a, a, a sniffer dog, a dog that could work for the police force and find things. And so she's kind of, her talents are squandered on the streets. And, uh, and so she wants to get involved and help bite Doug's dick off. 
I think there's obviously a lot of pervasive language and a lot of dick jokes, but at the heart of it, these four dogs have this incredible friendship that they're bonded together by a sense of really otherness. They're sort of, they, they, they don't belong anywhere. And there's something beautiful about them creating their own family. Them not, um, by not having their own family, they choose each other. And that friendship is, is, is very special and very emotional. Um, so obviously at its heart, it, it is a, it's a buddy comedy or an ensemble buddy comedy, but then it, the, you know, the, the cherry on top of the cake is it's just a really hilarious R rated movie with an incredibly, um, <laughs> an incredibly rated R premise. <laughs> I think this is a big cinematic experience. It's got action, it's got comedy, it's got horror, it's got romance, it's got drama. Um, and at the heart of it, it's a, you know, it's a, it's just a great story about someone who wants to bite their owner's dick off. This is about a dog that hates me, that uh, tries to find me to bite my dick off. The script is hysterical and also oddly touching for what a dirty movie it is. It's also, it, it, it's, I, I found myself tearing up in a couple places. Doug got his just desserts. Doug definitely had many, many, many chances to, to make things right. And he should have never been in that situation in the first place. You see, that cute little Reggie, who's played by several dogs, but the main one is Sophie. Um, it's just the cutest thing you'd ever see, and, and it drives me crazy to think that there are people out there who mistreat uh, their pets like this, and, and uh, yeah, so fuck that guy. Doug deserved to get his, his uh, penis bitten off, and I was happy to be the person to get his penis bitten off as Doug. The main point of this is to have people laugh and enjoy themselves. Uh, but it's, I, I, I think that there might be places where it will be surprisingly emotional for people. Strays is about a sweet, naive dog named Reggie who loves life. And above all things, he loves his owner, Doug. But it turns out Doug is a neglectful, abusive, piece of shit, for lack of a better word. Uh, and, you know, the, the story begins with Reggie playing another classic round of fetch and fuck, which is his favorite game to play with Doug, which is where Doug drives him far away, throws the ball, and then drives home without him. And Reggie thinks it's my job to find the ball and find my way back home. And when I bring the ball back, Doug yells out, fuck. And that's how I know I won the game. So that's sort of Reggie's perspective on the world. and and on Doug, and the movie begins with Doug driving very, very far away, hours into the city, dropping Reggie off. Reggie is, for the first time in his life, astray. He meets a very streetwise dog named Bug, voiced by the amazing Jamie Foxx, and Bug takes him under his wing, teaches him that stray life is the best life, you don't need an owner, and Reggie realizes for the first time that he was in a horrible, toxic relationship, and decides that he would like to get revenge on Doug. So with the help of Bug and Bug's two friends, these four dogs go on a incredible journey to get revenge by biting Doug's dick off. So it's just a classic heartwarming family tale. <laughs> I thought it would probably be just a spoof, you know, a spoof of dog films, which seemed funny, but probably not for me. And what really surprised me was just how much heart the script had and the depth it went into, and that they were, these were actually fully complex, fully developed characters, even though they were dogs. And so that, I think, is really what hooked me in. And I think that's, you know, when I think of all my favorite films uh, in the comedy world, be it, you know, 40 Old Virgin or 21 Jump Street or, you know, or Superbad, they're really loud and fun comedically, but then there's a, there's a depth to them and there's heart. And I think that's what surprised me. And that's really what hooked me in. You know, in many ways, I remember thinking like, this reminded me of um, films like Stand By Me and Breaking Away and these kind of like, where your friends become your family type of stories. And um, 
the, it just felt much more elevated than I anticipated. And, that, and that's really when I got hooked in. The, the day he finally said yes, he told me he was in the car. Will was in the car with his 13-year-old son, Axel. And he had read the script and loved it, had a conversation with me, which was great. And he said to Axel, hey, um, would you want to see a movie where I play a little dog? And the movie's kind of dogs, but they're filthy mouth. It's R-rated. And my goal is to bite off my mean owner's dick. And, you know, Axel said, yes, dad, absolutely. You have to do that film. So big thanks to uh, Will's 13-year-old son for, for getting Will involved in the project. <laughs> Well, it, I absolutely love talking dog movies for everything that they are. You know, they are they are moving. You know, it's like overly dramatic, slightly corny, and and and. But I've watched them all. I've watched everything uh, since you know, Homeward Bound. You know, and the Dog's Journey. So I, I loved what he did to the genre paid respect to it, twisted it, but also made it very emotional. It's very hard to have a comedy that has that much laugh at loud, you know, just you know, moments in the page, on the page, and, and, and also emotion that just translates. So I really felt, you know, just, I was both, you know, moved, moved uh, you know, to tears and laughing out loud in the same moment. So really, I was just like, this is, this is, this is the movie I want to be involved with. Everybody loves dogs. We are moved by dogs. There's something that just just is so close to our hearts when we see a dog, a dog that hurts, a dog that plays, a dog that just you know enjoys life. Like there's n there's no animal other than dogs that just enjoy life as much as you know they do. So so we just were were able to you know sort of like focus our attention around these ideas and just make them you know make this journey you know, as beautiful and emotional as we could, you know, and really, really, really funny. <laughs> he wants to get rid of him. And then one day he sends him so far away that Reggie is lost. And he thought, it, you know, Reggie thinks it's a game, but then he tries to find his way home. And yes, he's been abandoned. And he will find through, you know, he's wondering you know, the different dogs in the street, different strays, and the first one being Bug. Uh, and together, they'll find their way home with a very, very special mission, <laughs> a very special task at hand. Uh, and that's the PG version. <laughs> and now, the R-rated version. Okay, this dog who was abused by this horrible man called Doug, who's like, you know, a butthead loser gets you know abandoned and he will find uh, 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 th in the streets different strays led by the uh, by by bug and they will teach him the ways of the stray life you know you know uh, eating drinking having sex with you know virtually anything and and that's when uh, Reggie will realize that he was abused and abandoned and will decide to go home and you know, seek revenge upon his owner and destroys the thing that he loves the most, his dick. And they decide together to go home and rip his, dick, his owner's dick off. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he is the street. He, he's like, you know, you meet this dog in the street, be scared. <laughs> he's the stray that knows. Now, now, Bug is amazing and Bug is like a leader. And and but deep inside, Bug is wounded. Bug is hurt. You know, there's a there's a a story to between each dog. Like whenever you see a dog in the street, look at them and understand where they come from. You know, and that's what we're trying to say with this movie. Our producing partner Adithya came to us and said, "I have a script that's about uh, toxic relationships," and we said, "I don't know." And then he said. It stars dogs who bite their owner's dick off. And we were like, that I understand. <laughs> and what's great about the movie also is that, you know, it really is about something. It's not just uh, funny dogs being funny um, and uh, raunchy stuff being naughty, but it also is really about um, about relationships and about uh, what, is, what is a positive relationship. Uh, and, and standing up for yeah, yourself. Yeah, and it ends up, uh, you know, can bring a tear to your eye. It's, a, it's a actually emotional, sweet 
movie underneath all of it, and, and these things really have to be. So when Reggie discovers that um, his owner is a real bad guy, um, and uh, who has abandoned him in the big city, he teams up with some uh, stray dogs that he befriends, and they help Reggie um, get back home to his owner, where he stands up for himself in a very colorful manner. And gets revenge. Yes. They say, Chris, that uh, living well is the best revenge. Not true. They're wrong. The best revenge is revenge. Living well is at best the second best revenge. We're going to need to root for this dog to brutally dismember someone. <laughs> Who could possibly make me root for that goal? And they're like, oh, it's one guy, it's Will Ferrell. <laughs> Since the first time we ever showed it to an audience, it's just a crowd pleaser. And the audience can't believe what they're seeing. They can't believe that it's really happening. They are so excited to imagine what the like interior lives of their animals <laughs> are like, and that they're just as frail and funny and weird as they imagine. Strays is about uh, a group of dogs who are strays uh, and they conspire to uh, help one of their friends to bite the d off of his owner. Yeah. <laughs> and I just saying it uh, felt very strange. <laughs> the fact that these dogs got together to conspire to bite the d off of their owner. Just how wild the movie was, but also how funny the movie was and how much heart the movie has. I mean, all of that, the mix of all of that uh, just made for something so unique to me and so, uh, uh, so fun. He is just a very sweet, happy, innocent, extremely victimized dog. He's been mistreated and constantly abandoned by his owner, but because he is so uh, uh, so pure of heart, he you know he he believes that this is all just a fun game, you know, and and that uh, Doug actually loves him, but uh, you know it takes some street streetwise dogs to teach him that uh no this this guy's terrible this guy's the worst and uh it, it, it's tough for him to uh come to grips with that i feel like this is very much like an epic event film about a group of dogs you know uh i mean they really go on a real hero's journey there is something very uh exciting about this movie there's like a just a something very different about it and original and uh, uh uh and 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 it goes back to that heart too and it has a lot of you know it has it has so much heart that i feel like it's it's almost tailor-made to 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 watch with a bunch of people in a room and to laugh together and to uh uh and to, you know, be appalled together. <laughs> well, in 2018, 2019, around then, there were a lot of uh, family-friendly PG dog movies. And sort of, like, as a comedic writer, one of my favorite things to do is take trends that are so clearly in having a moment um, and find the sort of dumb and maybe twisted version of them. And so, it was so much fun playing with dog movie tropes, of which there are so many. Uh, but then it was also a matter of like, how can we find the emotional core to this to make you actually care about these dogs in the same way that you do care about the pups in movies like Homeward Bound, which I've seen probably 15 times. Um, and that was really fun too. It was like, can we get people laughing and then sort of Trojan horse a, a, a sweeter or more meaningful story beneath that? 
So around 2018, 2019, there were a lot of sweet, family-friendly dog movies. Uh, there was like four or five within the same year. I remember seeing a billboard and thinking, oh, there, there's been a lot of these. And look, I'm a fan of the genre, but I'm also a fan of finding the dumb, sometimes twisted version of popular subgenres and trends. And so to me, it was how do we subvert the dog movie? And it was so fun playing with the well-established tropes of the family dog movie. But then it was also a matter of like, well, what's the emotional core here? And what's the, the deeper, uh, more personal story we're telling? Uh, and hopefully, you know, you do care about these dogs in the same way that you care about uh, the dogs from Homer Bound and some of these other movies that we're paying homage to. Um, I've seen Homer Bound probably 15, 20 times. That was like my go-to. Uh, if I was sick from school, I was watching Homer Bound probably two or three times. Um, so, uh, and I saw it recently. So anyways, like the dog movie was a very big part of my family upbringing. And uh, this was sort of a, a tip of the cap to that. I tell people that Strays is an insane R-rated talking dog movie that's just a perfect send up of all of those great movies that we loved when we were kids, like Homeward Bound. Um, and what's really fun about it is at the same time, it's as heartwarming as any one of those films. The great thing about Strays that I think is very much in accordance with the kinds of things that Chris, Phil, and I tried to do is um, it's, an, it's a representation of a genre of film that we love, and we're able to break it down and deconstruct it and make fun of it, but at the same time actually secretly deliver you all of those same values. So it's a movie that has comedy, but also has heart, has emotion, um, and I think it's just a genuinely fun dog movie. There are so many great uh, set pieces in this film. I think the eagle sequence is an all-time classic. Um, the dogs eating the mushrooms in the field and their hallucinations is really something that uh, co we couldn't stop laughing about when we read. Um, and of course, the coup de gras, Doug getting his um, just desserts uh, is something that we uh, were excited to share with the world.